four Iranian nuclear scientists Masoud Alamohammadi, Majid Shariari, Dariush Rezainajad, and Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan were assassinated between 2010 and 2012. Another scientist, Faridun Abbasi, was wounded in an attempted murder. Two of the killings were carried out with magnetic bombs attached to the target's cars. Dariush Rezainajad was shot dead, and Masoud Alamohammadi was killed in a motorcycle bomb explosion. The Iranian government accused Israel of complicity in the killings. In 2011 and 2012, Iranian authorities arrested a number of Iranians alleged to have carried out the assassination campaign on behalf of Mossad, the Israeli intelligence service. Western intelligence services and U.S. officials reportedly confirmed the Israeli connection. In June 2012, the Iranian government was confident that it had arrested all the assassins. Israel has neither confirmed nor denied its involvement, but Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yaalan said, We will act in any way and are not willing to tolerate a nuclear armed Iran. We prefer that this be done by means of sanctions, but in the end, Israel should be able to defend itself." The assassination campaign was reportedly terminated in 2013 following diplomatic pressure from the United States, which was attempting to negotiate restrictions on Iran's nuclear activities. The People's Mujahedin of Iran Mech, are also among suspects. Two U.S. senior officials confirmed that MEC was "...financed, trained, and armed by Israel," in killing Iranian nuclear scientists, according to the private American intelligence agency Stratfor, a fifth Iranian scientist was poisoned by Mossad in 2007. In 2014 the scientist's sister accused the Iranian government of involvement in her brother's killing. In January 2015, Iranian authorities said that they had thwarted another attempt by Mossad to assassinate an Iranian nuclear scientist. Topic: <laughs> Timeline Topic Events Topic The fifteenth of January two thousand seven Ardashir Hosseinpour was initially reported to have died of gas poisoning from a faulty heater. Quote Later reports indicated foul play. American, private, intelligence company Stratfor released a report on 2 February 2007 in which the claim was made, based on "...sources very close to Israeli intelligence," that the victim was, "...in fact a long-time Mossad target." In 2014, Ardashir's sister, Mabuba Hosseinpour, interviewed from Turkey in a conversation arranged by the New Iran opposition group, claimed that her brother was murdered by Iran's Revolutionary Guards rather than by Israel, for refusing to participate in Iran's nuclear enrichment program whose use was for atomic weapons purposes. According to Stratfor, Hosseinpour died of radiation poisoning. Topic: The 12th of January 2010. At 7:58 a.m., a remote controlled bomb attached to a motorcycle parked near the car of Masoud Alamohammadi, exploded as he left his home in the Gitariya neighborhood of northern Tehran to go to a university. Windows of houses around the scientist's home were shattered by the force of the blast, and two more people were reportedly injured. 
According to the BBC, the jolt made neighbors think that an earthquake had struck. The assassination was reportedly carried out by Majid Jamali Fashi, who stated in a televised confession, confirmed as genuine by Western intelligence officials, that he'd acted on the instructions of Mossad and had been trained in Tel Aviv. I woke up at four and made a call, the plan had not changed. I parked the motorbike near the tree," Fashi said in his confession. Alamohamadi's wife said, I heard the explosion just when I closed the door. According to Mazayar Ibrahimi, a perpetrator code named Amiril Persian, Amiril, three teams were involved in the Alamohamadi assassination. Some of them were on their cars watching the situation and covering the area and I was in my car in a further place from the incident place waiting to take them away after the explosion was done." Ibrahimi reportedly said under interrogation, "...they told me that he was getting out of the parking lot and I pressed the remote button when I saw him." and moved toward the car waiting for me in the alley. Then we moved away," said Arash Kurhadkish, code-named Farshid, Bezad, and Aaron under interrogation, as reported by the Mare News Agency. The 29th of November 2010 Majid Shariari, a professor at Shahid Beheshti University was killed from a bomb launched from a motorbike. The assassins had attached a car bomb, detonating it from a distance. Shariari's wife, Gassemi, was a passenger in the car and was injured in the explosion. I attached the bomb to the right front door and moved away quickly said Arash Kurhadkish, who was convicted of assassinating Shariari. One member of the assassination team was knocked from his motorcycle by the force of the blast. The motorcycle fell down and one of the riders was injured. We helped him, said Mariam Azadi, a convicted member of the team, under interrogation. In an almost simultaneous bomb attack, Feridun Abbasi, a professor at Shahid Beheshti University, where Shariari also taught, and his wife were injured. I had a meeting with Dr. Shariari at the early morning. The bomb was attached to my car at 7.42. We were around the university square and I heard the sound of something colliding with my car and looked back and saw a motorbike. I concluded that that thing colliding with the car was a bomb. I stopped at once and told my wife to get out. According to his wife, Abbasi sustained facial and hand injuries. Topic: The 23rd of July 2011. Dariush Rezainajad was shot five times and killed by motorcycle riding gunman in front of his home while he was with his wife after they picked up their daughter from kindergarten. His wife was also wounded in the attack. The attack was described by an Israeli intelligence interviewed by Der Spiegel as. The first public operation by new Mossad chief Tamir Pardo. Rezainajad's wife, Shorey Parani, was also wounded in the attack. I got off quickly and followed the shooter. After running several meters, I realized that they were shooting at me. I fell down and heard the motorcycle go away. She later said, initial reports said the gunman had killed 35-year-old Dariush Rezai, a physics professor whose area of expertise was neutron transport, and who was linked to Iran's nuclear program. 
The victim was subsequently identified as Rezaina Jad, a postgraduate electrical engineering student at Tehran's KN2C University of Technology, who was expected to defend his thesis and working at a national security research facility. After the assassination, the Speaker of Iran's parliament Ali Larajani stated that the United States and Israel had killed Rezaeinajad. The U.S. government, through State Department spokeswoman Victoria Nuland, rejected the accusation. The 11th of January 2012 Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan was assassinated with a magnetized explosive attached to the side of his car on his way to work on the second anniversary of Masoud Alamohammadi's murder at 8.30 am in Shahid Golnabi Street, Said Khandan, eastern Tehran. According to Western intelligence sources, Ahmadi Roshan was a victim of Israel's Mossad. In this location, we reached the car and attached the bomb to the car and the bomb exploded near the white fence," said Arash Kurhadkish, under interrogation, as reported by the Mare News Agency. <laughs> <laughs> January 2015 Iranian authorities claimed they had thwarted another Mossad attempt to assassinate an Iranian nuclear scientist. Topic: Responsibility. While the assassinations were being carried out, there was speculation about the identity of their perpetrators. Although the Israeli Mossad intelligence service was seen as the most likely candidate, other suspects included Iranian opposition groups such as MEK, intelligence operatives from Arab countries opposed to the Iranian regime, and the United States. Iran blamed Israel and the U.S. for the assassinations. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton categorically denied any U.S. role in the killings, a denial called plausible by analysts given the reported lack of U.S. intelligence assets in Iran. Israel neither confirmed nor denied its role in the killings. In early 2011, Majid Fashi confessed to the killing of Masoud Alamohammadi on Iranian state television, saying that he had trained for the operation at a Mossad facility near Tel Aviv. Fashi was executed in May 2012. That month, Iranian authorities announced the arrest of another 14 Iranians, eight men and six women, described as an Israeli-trained terror cell responsible for five of the attacks on Iranian scientists. Iran's IRTV Channel 1 broadcast a half-hour documentary, Terror Club, which included the televised confessions of the twelve suspects allegedly involved in the killings of Ali Mohammadi, Shariari, Rezainajad, and Roshan, and the attempted killing of Abbasi. According to Time, Western intelligence officials confirmed the cracking of two Mossad backed espionage rings by Iranian intelligence. Officials in the Obama administration also reportedly confirmed Israeli involvement. According to Dan Raviv, Mossad officials were pissed off and shocked to see their intelligence assets paraded on Iranian television. After the arrests, Iran said it was confident it had arrested all those responsible for the attacks. 
Time said that Iran attempted to retaliate against Israel for the assassinations by launching up to 20 hastily organized attacks on Israeli diplomatic missions around the world in 2012, none of which were successful. Israel has never publicly confirmed or denied responsibility for the assassinations, and Israeli officials have expressed readiness to employ all necessary means in the nation's defense. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yaalan said in an interview with Der Spiegel, "...ultimately it is very clear, one way or another, Iran's military nuclear program must be stopped. We will act in any way and are not willing to tolerate a nuclear-armed Iran." We prefer that this be done by means of sanctions, but in the end, Israel should be able to defend itself." Yalan added that he was not responsible for the life expectancy of Iranian scientists. The assassination campaign against Iranian nuclear scientists reportedly ended in 2013 following pressure on Israel from the Obama administration to stop the attacks during negotiations with Iran to restrict its nuclear program. Mossad officials also reportedly concluded that the attacks were too dangerous for valuable intelligence operatives in Iran. The organization has since reportedly instructed its Iranian spy network to concentrate on finding evidence of Iranian breaches of its nuclear restriction agreements. Although Israel is considered responsible for the 2010 to 2012 assassination campaign against Iranian nuclear scientists, uncertainty surrounds the 2007 death of Iranian scientist Ardashir Hosseinpour. Hosseinpour was reported by Iranian authorities to have died from gas poisoning caused by a faulty heater, but a six-day delay in their announcement raised suspicions outside Iran. According to Stratfor, Hosseinpour was assassinated by Mossad using radiation poisoning. Iranian officials denied this, calling their scientists safe. Quote, in 2014 Hosseinpour's sister, Mabuba, accused the Iranian Revolutionary Guard of killing him for his alleged refusal to work on Iran's nuclear enrichment program. Mabuba said that she obtained the information from Ardashir's widow. Reactions The U.S. government condemned the assassinations without implicating any party. However, some American politicians took a different view. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich supported "...taking out Iranian scientists," and presidential candidate Rick Santorum called the killings "...a wonderful thing." Israel Defense Forces spokesman General Yoav Mordecai said that he had no idea who targeted Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan, but I certainly don't shed a tear. Mehdi Hassan wrote in The Guardian, These men on motorbikes have been described as assassins. But assassination is just a more polite word for murder. How many more of our values will we shred in the name of security? Once we have allowed our governments to order the killing of fellow human beings, in secret, without oversight or accountability, what other powers will we dare deny them? Historian Michael Burley compared the assassinations to the Allied bombing of Nazi V-2 rocket sites during World War II, noting that the bombers were not unduly concerned whether scientists and engineers were killed too, nor foreign slave laborers, provided the V-2 ceased raining down on London. According to Burley, scientists are not abstract researchers, there are real-world consequences of their actions, and he 
shall not shed any tears whenever one of these Iranian scientists encounters one of the unforgiving men on motorbikes except that if Israel ventures down this road, I cannot think of much of an argument to prevent Iran following them, and then anyone else who decides to follow." The assassinations have reportedly had a "...chilling impact." on the Iranian scientific community, making it more difficult for the regime to recruit anyone for national security research efforts." Paul Koring wrote that the assassinations, regardless of their effectiveness, "...left a real trail of grief." Koring cited Shorha Parani, the widow of Dariush Rezainajad, who was gunned down in front of his wife and five-year-old daughter. A year after the assassination, he wrote that Armida still draws pictures of her father. In them, she and her mother always have their mouths open in terrified screams. Every day, Mrs. Parani said, she makes that painting. Supreme leader of Iran Ali Khamenei condemned the attacks, saying that they aim to hinder the Iranian scientific movement. Topic. See also Assassination and terrorism in Iran Chain murders of Iran Targeted killings by Israel Defense Forces <laughs>